Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to talk about unions, um, intersections, complements, and inclusions, and um, and how they relate, um, and how they can kind of be reversed in some sense. Um, I mean, by let's suppose that we have um, subsets in a power set, like zero, one, one, zero, one. And maybe you have something else like zero, one, zero, zero, one. Notice that this subset right here is included in this one. And we can kind of see, because whenever we have a one, we also have a one up here. Now, what if we were to switch out the ones and the zeros? So we have one, zero, zero, one, zero, and we have one, zero, one, um, let's see, one and zero. Okay, notice that we have inclusion this way now. So in other words, kind of like it's very dual. Um, whenever, so we have, we have notice whenever we have a zero here, we have a zero here. These two ideas are equivalent when we take complements. So in particular, um, if this is a, a and this is B, let's call this the complement of A, which means to reverse, uh, switch out all your ones and zeros. Kind of, um, and that's what complement means. So it basically take all the elements that aren't in this set, take all the elements that aren't in this set, take its complement, um, and you have inclusion this. Uh, so you have inclusion that way. So if you include this inclusion, implies that inclusion. And their two are actually equivalent. If you have this, that's the exact same idea as that. So if this is true, that's true. If that's true, that's true. They're logically equivalent ideas, which we can notate like this, which means if and only if. So we have B is included in A, if and only if um, A complement is included in B complement. Very nice idea. So taking complements, actually what it does to the post set, to the power set post set, or the Hasse diagram even, if you will, it turns it upside down. Um, it just reverses all the arrows very nicely. Um, and we also kind of have the idea that intersection and union also reverse. Um, and the reason for that is, I mean, think about a Hasse diagram and think about um, if you have like A, you have A intersect B, A and B. A intersect B is kind of like the biggest thing that's underneath both A and B. It's the biggest subset that's underneath or included in both A and B. So it's the biggest thing underneath. Well, if you were to reverse these arrows, you would have an arrow going here and here. So this would be like the smallest thing. So the image of the merge, or not the, the flipping, I should say, not the, so let F be a flipping action. So if F is a flipping action, so all the arrows are reversed too, so it's not really a, um, then what's, then it doesn't really preserve structure in the same way, it kind of anti-preserve structure because you're flipping around arrows. So think about this, you're taking the image on, in a flipping action of A intersect B, it's gonna be like the smallest thing above F of A and F of B. So kind of thinking of further down the arrows being above or kind of like, bigger than, like this is like the smallest thing bigger than those, and that's what union is. So really what we're gonna get is we're gonna get F of A union F of B, kind of in this flipping action where F means taking complements. So really we should, if we think of F as taking complements, we have A complement union um, B complement is equal to, takes taking the complement of, a intersect B. So this is called De Morgan's law. It's a nice way of thinking about uh, thinking about um, about complements. And if we had a whole string of things, we can naturally just like you know we have like A union B uh, or intersect B and then union C or something like that. We want to take a complement. All it does is it just reverses puts the complement through and then kind of reverses this to be intersect that to be union because all the arrows are flipped around um, in that in that way. 
So you get something like that. Thanks for watching.